Hello viewers, this is Charles from Charles Kirk Studio. In this video I want to do two things. I want to install a development environment for Lua and I want to write our first program in Lua because I'm sure you're keen to get started and actually write some code. I'm going to be using the Zero Brain Studio IDE for Lua development. For now, using Zero Brain Studio allows us to get up and running quickly and write some code. If you want to use something else, feel free to go ahead. So what are the advantages of using Zero Brain Studio? Well, it's lightweight. It runs on Windows, Linux and Mac OS. It's easy to install. It comes with the Lua programming language built in, so you don't have to install it separately. In fact, it gives you several versions of the Lua programming language. It supports the Love Game Framework, which from now on going forwards, I'm going to refer to as Love 2D. In the following sections of this video, I'm going to install Zero Brain Studio IDE for Lua development on Windows, then on Linux and then on Mac OS. Because these installations are quick and simple to do, I'm including all three in this video and then we're going to get into some coding. First, I'm going to open up a window in Google Chrome and then I'm going to search for the Zero Brain Studio website. Now I'm going to navigate to the download page. If you find that you like Zero Brain Studio, consider making a donation, but for now I'm just going to go straight to the download page. For Windows, you can either download the zip archive here or the XE installer. The only difference between the two is that the XE installer runs a script which installs a shortcut to Zero Brain Studio so that when you press the start key on your Windows keyboard and type in Zero Brain, you can go open the application from there. Because this is quite convenient, I'm going to do it that way. And you can see it's downloaded. I'm now going to open File Explorer and go to my Downloads directory. I'm going to double click on the installer to install it. I'm going to install Zero Brain Studio into the Applications folder on my C drive. I use this folder for programs that don't have a standard Windows installer and are self-contained in a single folder. So I'm going to browse to that folder. I'm going to right click on Applications, create a new folder and rename it to Zero Brain Studio. I'm then going to click OK and that hasn't worked. No, it has worked. And I'm now going to click Install. The application opens up automatically and here you can see it has links to lessons to get you started with the Zero Brain Studio IDE. I'm going to shut the application. I'm going to press the Windows Start key and type Zero Brain and you can see it's the first entry. Hit Return and it opens up. In this section of the video I'm going to install Zero Brain Studio on Linux. In this case Ubuntu 24.10, the latest version at the time of recording. This should work on any Linux distribution. I have opened a new window in Google Chrome. I'm going to search for Zero Brain Studio and navigate to the Downloads page. If I click on the installer, it simply opens a script. That's not what I want, so I'm going to go back and this time I'm going to right click on it and save it to my downloads folder. I'm going to use the cd command to change directory to download. I'm going to use the ls command with the alh flag to list the files and folders and their permissions. I need to give the script the executable permission so I can run it. To do this I use the chmod command. Plus x adds the executable permission and then I need to type in or copy paste the file name. 
Now, at the moment I'm recording, my autocomplete is not working, so I'm going to use copy, paste, and fix the autocomplete after I've done the recording. So we need paste, and now if I type, I'm going to use the up arrow on my keyboard to get the ls command again and run it, and you can see we now have the executable flag, and now all I need to do is to type in dot forward slash zero brain. In fact, I can use the copy paste from here, so let's do that. And you can see Zero Brain Studio has now been installed. To check that it actually has been installed, I'm going to click the Show Apps button and try and open it up. And as you can see, Zero Brain Studio ID is now installed on my Ubuntu system. I should add here that my main Windows workstation is dual boot. It has Windows 11 on one SSD and it has Ubuntu on a second SSD. And the boot manager for Ubuntu is also on second SSD, which means that you can use the BIOS to run the system so it only sees Windows, or you can load the Grub uh, boot manager, and then you can either boot into Windows, which I've set as the default, or boot into Ubuntu. In this section of the video, I'm going to install Zero Brain Studio on Mac OS. I'm going to down click on the installer to download it. I'm then going to switch to the desktop where I have Finder open and double click on the disk image. That opens the disk image and all I have to do to install it is to drag Zero Brain Studio onto the application shortcut. I'm going to close those windows. I'm going to eject the Zero Brain Studio open disk image. And I'm now going to press command space and start typing in Zero Brain Studio to open it. And as you can see, Zero Brain Studio has been successfully installed on my Mac. Now we have Zero Brain Studio installed on whatever operating system you're using, we can now go ahead and write some code. I'm going to create a new file. I can either go File, New, or I can click the button here. I'm now going to save it to disk, and I'm going to call it gettingstarted.lua. You can call it anything you like, but it needs to have .lua at the end. Now I'm going to put the finished version of the code onto my GitHub, and I'll put a link in the description below this video. So the simplest program we can write is the Hello World program, which is in Lua, very simple, it's a single line. So we start with the function print, we then open brackets, we then open double quotation marks, type in hello world, close the quotation marks, close the brackets, and that's our program. Now to run the program, we can either go project run, or as you can see, there's a keyboard shortcut F6, or we can click this button here, it looks like a fast forward button, but it's actually execute the current project file. And if we do that, we can see the program ran successfully and it's output hello world to the console. Now that's all well and good, but it would be a lot more useful if we could get the computer to do something that we couldn't do easily ourselves. So we can actually do something a bit more interesting. I'm going to introduce the concept in advance of when I'm planning to present it. And that's the concept of the for loop. Before I talk about the for loop, I'm going to introduce you to comments. Now, in programming languages, you add comments to code to make it clearer what was intended. And in Lua, comments start with double dash. So if I put double dash ahead of the Hello World program, you can see it's greyed out. And now if I hit the Run button, nothing will happen. And you can see nothing happened. Although it did actually run, it just didn't find anything to do because there's no commands. Now, a for loop is a programming construct that repeats a block of code until a condition is met. Every programming language has for loops. I'm going to type it in and explain as I go. So the first thing is you type the keyword for. We're then going to need an iterator. We need to 
count the number of times we're going to do loops. So I'm going to use I because that's the tradition. Then I'm going to set it to one. Then I'm going to have a comma. I have to give it how many loops I want, in this case five. And then I need to tell it what to do. And in Lua, you simply type do and then return. Lua's indented the code for me. Now I now need to type the command. So again, I'm going to type print, then hello world with the same syntax. And then I need to end the for loop with by typing end. Now, if I run this, what it's going to do is to print hello world five times. So let's run it and just verify that. And you can see it's printed hello world five times. Now I'm going to modify it a bit and introduce another concept that we're going to talk about in later videos, but makes this one a bit more interesting. It would be quite nice if we could print the number of the loop before the hello world. So if you were guessing on how to do this, you'd probably guess, well, perhaps I, and then maybe plus, and then hello world. Well, we can try that because it's not going to do any damage if it doesn't work. You can see it doesn't work. We get our first error. And the error is attempt to perform arithmetic on a string value. What that means is this is the string value and it's trying to add it. And in Lua, it's not possible to add a string value to a number, so it returns an error. However, there is a way to do this. And that is if we use the concatenation operator, which works with strings. So if we replace the add with the concatenation operator, which is double dots, then this program should work. So it did work, but we probably ought to have a space there, really. So what I'm going to do is to simply put a space in front of the H, and then we get something that looks a bit more elegant. So I've introduced a couple of concepts here just to allow us to write something a bit more interesting. But don't worry about these, because we're going to come back to these in the future tutorials. Um, I just wanted to make something a little bit more interesting in this starting video than a simple one-line Hello World program. In the next video, we're going to talk about variables. If you found this video useful, please consider clicking on the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.